vino spumeggiante nel bicchiere cintillante con il riso dell'amante mi tirfonde il giubilo I'm Chris and I've been living in Serrano well over 20 years now I was a green 20-something when I first came here and certainly knew practically nothing about the Tuscan kitchen, which is what we're here to talk to you about today. In the meantime, I've renovated my home in the center of the medieval town and created a garden on the opposite side of the river valley. Made lots of friends and had great good fortune to be invited into their homes and learn how to cook. But I'm still a bit of an amateur as compared to my mate here, Sean. Hi, I'm Sean. Um, I used to be a, a chef in New Zealand and in the UK, and I gave it all up to come and live in this wonderful part of Tuscany. Um, I've been here for 10 years, which is how I got to know my good friend Chris. I also built a house here, and um, I've moved into the tourism industry. Our plan is to go visit the kitchens of some of these friends we made and show you all how genuine Italian dishes are prepared. On this first occasion, however, we're going to stop by my garden and have a simple meal with friends. The garden is the setting for my book, Feast from Paradiso, which will be published next year. The book about Italian culture and cuisine is based around five feasts, some traditional, some historical, through the calendar year. So let's go. Okay. We're sitting in front of Luigino Porti's pottery, who died at age 92 this past year. We're going to go down in my trusty old seed, a Citroen BX from 1986, and you're going to see why it's so beat up. So down we go. This is uh, the entrance to a Via Cava, which was an Etruscan pathway carved out of the tooth, which is volcanic rock, leading down to the river valley and then back the, up the other side to town. Uh, this was used really as a principal means to get here from the north um, since up until the 1930s. And then there was the asphalt roadway built and a bridge, so this was this fell into disuse essentially. As you can see, it was all carved out uh, using picks and chisels. And uh, in any event, at this point, uh, I'm practically the only person that uses it, so it's up to me to keep the roadway maintained. This is a tight squeeze. I got about a centimeter on each side, so I gotta be kind of careful. Here we go. And uh, this is the beginning of my plots of land. Uh, we've got my, my uh, vegetable garden down there. We'll go and visit another time. And uh, right now we're going up to the garden, the botanic garden, as we say. Okay, from the car we're heading up a pathway which led originally to Castel Vecchio, which was a uh, castle that was sacked and abandoned probably back in the 16th century. All that's left here is the entrance, and there was actually an arch there that got nicked, I don't know, a little while ago. But when I first came here years ago, there was the archway. But um, I came along here and noticed something quite extraordinary one day with my machete, that there were a series of steps that led down, and so I hacked my way down, and eventually came down to the plot of land that was to become my garden. It's a series of 17 steps. And when I first discovered this plot of land, I mentioned it to Luigino the potter. 
And so he was quite excited because he seemed to think that this was where his uncle, Lorenzo, had his pottery, which was the oldest pottery of Serrano. And in fact, we came down here and we looked and we, this actually is the old pottery, but it's not full of wood and it's not very photogenic, so we're going to ignore it for the time being. But we went down there, scrambled in and found the old um, uh, oven and where glazes had been mixed. We're now at the garden and uh, there were a series of other caves as well. This is one of the caves here, which is the guest room. And then next we're coming to another one of the caves, which is where the kitchen is for today. And uh, I'm, I'm basically going to leave Sean to do some prep work for, for our lunch and carry on a ways. We then, I mean, when I first came here, this whole place was overgrown with old man's beard and brambles. And one could barely make out this old doorway. So when we came to the door, Gino pulled the brambles out of the way, put his shoulder to it. And as he opened the door, he turned to me and he said, Hey, quest era la grotta della topa. Now, we'll come and have a look at the grotta della topa another time. But I thought to myself, the pussy cave. I said to him, you don't mean to say that this was a bordello. And he said, well, yes, actually, this was the town whorehouse. And there was a woman who lived there, and her nickname was Topa. And uh, she was visited from the town opposite. So when I realized that, I, I, uh, I knew that I had to acquire this piece of land with this extraordinary view of Serrano. It has the oldest town pottery, and as I'm a ceramicist, that is of great interest to me. And it also has the town whorehouse, so what could be better? As we look back now on the Grotta della Topa, we can see one of the pieces that I've done, which is a representation of the Topa um, done in ceramic, all separate pieces thrown on the wheel and combined together to make this figurative sculpture. Moving on from the grotto, we come to the bread oven, which I don't think I discovered until a week or so after I'd acquired the property, it too being totally obscured by brambles. It works brilliantly, and I've made pizza and bread in it many times. Coming down to the confines of the original property, here below was the primary entrance. I've been told that this plot of land was the only one with two entrances for a good reason. Apparently clients would come from town to visit, and if they were followed by enraged wives brandishing rolling pins, they could always escape up the 17 steps at the other end. Beyond this point is the next plot, where there was a terrific landslide more than 100 years ago, and the land has been abandoned since then. It was essentially a thicket, and clearing it was a lot of work. So I've left many of the massive blocks of tufa in place and made a dry garden around them. I made various other plantings, and in other places I've made benches out of the stone, or here, utilized these niches, which were carved perhaps by the Etruscans or the Villanovans before them, to put another one of my sculptures. This one was made in remembrance of Giovanni Porri, the brother of Luigino, who was also a potter and sculptor, and was a good friend. I've done an Etruscan-style funerary urn, and there it sits. I've been told that Rosario Murabito, the Sicilian artist, set up some wine demijohns filled with water outside of his home in Camaiore in northern Tuscany, so I can't claim that this is an original idea. Townspeople sometimes ask me on sunny days what the glowing orbs are, and to make it simple, I explain that I put them here to scare off snakes, <clears throat> which strikes some as being sensible. It wouldn't make sense to say that I'd installed the bottles to enjoy the reflections and reversals quite like a camera lens.
Sean's patiently waited while I've gone foraging for a fistful of hops. The recipe for the frittata <clears throat> is just as good with nettles, but I have to say that I prefer... Ah, there he is. I prefer the hops, and their lovely nutty flavor. Mm, fantastic. Let's get these in the pan and start making the frittata. Give some of the ingredients we're going to meal. Strawberries, onions, asparagus, all fresh from the biodynamic garden. And Sean is now blanching the uh, hops. Here we're wilting the asparagus for the risotto and frying the uh, hops for the pitata. We're heading to the table with the first course, which is the hop frittata. And we have waiting for us Sabine and Kath. Fa vedere questa frittata, che bellezza. <laughs> now that we're done with the frittata, Sean's going to go on to making the risotto. So give us a quick primer on risotto making, Sean. <coughs> okay, we're just heating up the oil and then we're going to pop in the kindly chopped onions. We're going to saute them down till they're nice and soft without getting any color on them. Then we're going to put in the rice and then put in a good uh, splash of white wine. Let that reduce down and then start adding our broth which we've made from the asparagus stalks and um, uh, the pre-made chicken, and, chicken and, beef. Yes. and then we're going to be adding that in slowly until it absorbs all the broth then the last thing in will be the asparagus tips which we've already got cooked here second course risotto with asparagus Asparagus was off in his hands. Yes, yeah, no, it's Wow. Wow. Let's see if it's as good as the I think we should do this every week. Ah, that's the plan. It is the plan. That's so lovely. Deja mesure lamb every week, every Thursday. Let me just mention that we're having um, elderflower cordial um, and red wine that I make uh, with 30% Trebbiano, which is a white grape that makes it quite refreshing even in summer. So how's the meal? We're all enjoying it? Fantastic, even if I do say so myself. Excellent. Well done, <laughs> sir. Un brindisi. To the cook. To everybody. Chin chin. Chin chin. Chin chin. Chin chin. And this is the dessert, which is whisked ricotta with sugar and sambuca liqueur sprinkled with ground coffee and rosa canina, rose petals. And strawberries. Oh, strawberries too. <laughs> 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 We go. See you next Thursday. <laughs> I cannot going? believe you drive down. Yeah, it's going. Road. Okay, good. Oh my God!
So did you enjoy your meal? Oh, it was That's sublimely you... delicious. I'm trying to keep it down. Echo. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I can't see both at the it same time. Ah, okay, oh, okay. We'll see you next time. See then. you next time. I would say it was a meal well done. I think we had a great time. Okay. And we had great company and um, we'll see each other next time. Perfect. We're going to go up there and visit with an elderly friend of mine and make torture meal. Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. Job well done. She's a bastard. <laughs>